Over the past several weeks, I've picked up a number of games on my Steam Deck, both new and old, ranging from AAA releases to short indie games. So in this video, I want to talk to you guys about these games I've been playing, give you my initial impressions, and let you know if I think they're worth your time and money. But first, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you enjoy the video and want to see more, hit that like button and let me know in the comments what games you have been playing. Okay, so let's get to it. The first game I want to talk to you about is Elec Head. This game was released in 2021 and offers a unique experience where the gameplay is centered around the concept of electricity and circuits. As the name suggests, by utilizing the electric current flowing through the character's head, you can power up devices, activate switches, and manipulate the environment as you traverse the levels. It's essentially a puzzle game. The game starts with relatively straightforward puzzles, serving as an introduction to the game mechanics. However, as you delve deeper into the game, as you'd expect, the puzzles become increasingly more difficult and complex. This is a game well suited to the Steam Deck due to its pick up and play nature. You may find yourself scratching your head as you try to figure out how to progress, but then it's super satisfying when you do figure it out without having to look up an online guide. I recommend you guys check this one out and it often pops up in the Steam sale. The next game on my list is Dark. If you enjoy Limbo, Inside or Little Nightmares, then there's a good chance that you will enjoy Dark. I actually knew nothing about this game and I only picked it up because it was included in a recent bundle. But this game is actually really good. You play as a young boy trapped in a twisted and surreal dream world. The game takes you on a journey through the character's subconscious mind, where you need to navigate a series of nightmarish environments and solve intricate puzzles to progress. One of the core mechanics of Dark is the manipulation of gravity and perspective. You can defy the laws of physics, allowing you to walk on walls and ceilings as well as rotate the environment as you overcome obstacles and reach new areas. I've not yet finished this game, but I'm liking what I've played so far and I'm really enjoying the dark and eerie atmosphere. If you're into this type of game, then I think this is a game that you will enjoy. You'll often find this game cheap, so add this one to your wishlist or keep an eye out on Fanatical or Humble Bundle as it often gets bundled in with other games. The next game on my list is Dead Cells. It might surprise you, but I never actually played Dead Cells until recently. I just didn't think it was a game that I would enjoy, as I'm not super into roguelike games. But man was I wrong, this game is really addictive. I mainly wanted to play this to check out the Return to Castlevania DLC. I had wrongly assumed you could jump straight into the DLC, but it's not as straightforward as that. You do need to play the base game for a short while and die a number of times until you're able to access the DLC content. You also have to find the entrance to the castle, so it isn't as straightforward as loading it up from the menu, but that's not a problem because the base game itself is really good. So I've not actually spent that much time playing the DLC as I've been playing the main base game. I've only scratched the surface, but I can see why this is a well-loved game. I can actually find myself getting quickly addicted. In fact, if I wasn't talking to you guys now, I'd probably be playing it. I don't think there's much else to say about this game. You probably already own it. But if you were like me and were on the fence, I'd definitely recommend giving this a go. The next game on my list is a AAA release, and that is Dead Island 2. I'm several hours into this game, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm actually surprised at how well this runs on the Steam Deck. The developers kindly provided me with a review copy, and I'm glad they did, otherwise I probably wouldn't have picked this one up. I had assumed it would run terribly. Since this isn't on Steam yet, you do need to use an Epic Game Launcher or Heroic Launcher, I ran into issues with Heroic Launcher, but I've not had any issues using Epic Launcher and it may have just been an issue for me, but keep that in mind. I'm using a mixture of medium and low settings and it looks great and for the most part plays really smoothly. I like that this game is pretty linear, 
so it forces you down a specific route. It's not open world, and I think it's the better for it. This game is all about the gore, and my gosh does it deliver. The only complaint I have is the feeling when you hit an enemy. It just doesn't have that feeling, and it's not as satisfying as you'd like. It's hard to explain, but it just feels off. If I remember games such as Condemned on the Xbox, when you hit enemies with a pipe or some other weapon, you really feel the impact. Likewise, I've just finished playing Last of Us and Last of Us Part 2 on the PlayStation 5, and running up and hitting enemies with a pipe or weapon feels super satisfying, but you just don't get that with Dead Island 2, which is a little disappointing, and I think they could have made this much better, since that is the core mechanic after all. Nonetheless, I do recommend you guys check this one out, just maybe wait for a sale. Mirror's Edge is a first person adventure game that was first released in 2008. The game is known for its parkour game mechanic, and I'm surprised at how well this game still stands up today. First of all, the graphics still stand up, and I think that's down to the distinctive art style. The game runs at 60 frames per second, and the parkour mechanic works really well. In fact, it's likely what inspired other games such as Dying Light. Whilst there are weapons in this game, it's really about running, evading enemies and doing acrobatics and jumps. It makes you feel really badass and I love the feeling of barging through doors, leaping over barriers. It's just really cool. It also plays brilliantly on the Steam Deck. This game is also super cheap, so definitely pick this one up if you've never played it before. So let me know in the comments what games have you been playing and whilst you're here why not check out one of my other videos. See you soon.